Warning, the following video has not been approved by the Comic Code Authority, and is intended for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on everybody? This is the Comic Assassin, and it is Black Friday, which means some of you guys may, may be out there getting your shopping on. I don't do Black Friday to be honest with you. I think I talked the wife into doing it a few years ago. We did it once and she was like, nope, not doing this anymore. <laughs> so, but if you did go, I hope you got all the stuff that you guys wanted to get. I uh, hope you didn't have to get trampled and have to deal with crazy mass mobs of people. But hey, but I also hope that all of you guys had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, the assassin himself, well, I, had, I had a good one. You got to wake up in the morning watch the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade uh, with the kids, which was weird. Like, that, that, that parade, I don't know if you watched it, it started off really freaking weird. Like, they had Beetlejuice, it was like one of their opening acts. So, and then they had another act, like, uh, like two or three after that, that was, like, just dark. Like, dark, like, talking about death. And I was like, is this a Halloween parade or a Thanksgiving parade? Um, but if they did get back on, on course, and if they do the Broadway things, I get it. But man, like, the Macy's Day, uh, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, it just, it seems like it's lost something. Uh, it, I'm still going to watch it, alright? Even though I'm going to complain, I'm still going to watch it, alright? Because it's tradition, it's a tradition I want to pass on to my kids. But like, I guess maybe as a kid, like, I just remember the floats being bigger, um, of course, this year they had to keep the floats lowered the ground because of the wind. I get that. But there was no Spider-Man. Like, the last few years I have not seen Spider-Man. And I just thought that it was because I just missed when they showed it. Right? But no, it turns out they do no, they no longer have a Spider-Man float. And that ticks me off, man. <laughs> that really does tick me off. In fact, I'm actually thinking about putting together a petition... To bring back the Spider-Man float. So if that's something that you would be interested in signing, let me know. Because I might actually put it, this thing into the works, man. Because I want some Spidey at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. But yeah, other than that, it was just kind of dark and like just weird. The whole like the whole lip singing stuff, like I could care less for. I get it. People want to see celebrities. That's fine. But like really, like do we have to see some of lip singing? every two or three uh, shots and, and Al Roker I, I like Al Roker but please do not make the Al Roker you know mobile him on a white seat that looks like a toilet bowl right because all I can think of is, is Al Roker shitting his pants in the White House and then you sitting him on this thing with, with practically which looks like a toilet bowl and ah uh, yeah funny stuff Anyway, I'm talking too much about it, but I really do hope you guys had a great holiday. Uh, it is Friday. This is that got where I let you guys know some of the books I picked up, as well as do a little bit of a comic book review. Uh, I have to be somewhat quick about it because I have to go pick up the kids. Uh, start with DC. Red Hood Outlaw, number 40. One with that cover B on that. And also John Constantine's Hellblazer, number 1. Looking forward to reading that. Only DC books I got, and I only got two Marvel books, and they're both symbiote related. Scream, Curse of Carnage, number one. Went with that art germ. It actually looks better in person than, than I thought it would. And then the Venom, number 20. I decided to go with cover A on this one. That, that's another one. That, that cover C, the one that had the sleeper on it, originally looked better to me. When I, when I put them side by side in person, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go with cover A on this one. For some of my indie books, Vault, Resident number 5. It's an awesome story, so I had to pick up number 5. The Marked number 2, which I've, I've read already, and it was it's pretty good. I am digging the marked. And the two books that I'm, I'm, I'm going to do one quick review. In fact, both of these are probably going to be quick reviews. Uh, and for multiple reasons. 
Uh, I'm going to do show's end number four. Because I've already done one, two, and three for you guys. So I said, hey, why not? Let's do a number four. Uh, I'm not going to go page by page. There are going to be spoilers. Uh, but basically, where it leaves off is we know our main court character, Lorelai, in the, in the last issue. Basically, she helps kind of save the day for the circus, at least at this point. So they're having this party for where this Count Crowley shows up. And he is the guy who bought her back in issue one, but he only saw the monster side of her. He doesn't necessarily know what she looks like. At least that's what we, we are led to believe. And he's pretty much congratulating her and saying, oh, you know, how, how did you do that? Uh, what was it? The, the blade staircase. And she walked on all these swords and wasn't hurt. And he's asking her, and they're like, hey, we I don't care if you were a carny back in the day or not. not we do not divulge our information to anybody. And pretty much it gets to where he's telling the story of his former days as a circus act. And basically he said that he was always, you know, talking about how he was just you know, enthralled with, uh, you know, magic and the performing arts and all this and how he could take this to the next extreme and he ended up doing a whole bunch of rituals so here he is cutting himself um, drinking the blood and basically what he did is he, he's, he invoked what he calls the god a uh, god of the old that's all we know uh, but lo and behold after he does this he goes and performs and the whole tent catches on fire killing like 300 folks and basically that was the end of him and his uh his business so basically he says that he is trying to get revenge and the way he tends to get this revenge is to seek the only kin or the the daughter of this god of old which we are led to believe is our main character of this story and they're like, well, what does it have to do with us? And he is like, you know, I've been tracking this thing. I know about that slaughter that happened, that just happened right when you were in town. And then basically the the head of the circus, he comes in, he shuts the shit down. He's like, nope, 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 nope. We had nothing to do with that. You know, you've outstayed your welcome. You know, you got to go. And he's like, you know, I'm sorry. He was kind of slick about it. He's like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, thank you for the brief hospitality you've given me. I, I appreciate that. You know, if anybody has a, if anybody else remembers anything about that night, you know, here's my card, right? All right, and this is where it gets kind of dark. So if you don't remember, I'll go back to the first page. This main character right here, what was his name? Twi is it Twigs? Anyway, he's the guy with the the sword eater. He's super depressed. Um, because of Flipsy, who was the, the the girl that he was looking after that died in issue one. He's depressed, but he told uh, Lorelai in the last issue, next time we go to show's end, don't leave until you know it's time. Right? So he's telling her to wait. Something's going to happen next time we go to show's end. And show's end is the place that they go to bury their own. So if anybody dies, if you're a freak, if you're in the you know within the act... If you die, you get buried at show's end. Well, he offed himself. So instead of swallowing a sword, you know, he, he impaled himself with a sword. So like, okay, it's time to go to show's end. They bury him. She's kind of putting up a little bit of argument. She's like, you know, I want to stay. And they're like, no, we, we don't leave anybody behind. You have to come with us. But I guess she hid and she stayed anyway. And what does she find? But basically, as soon as they're buried, as soon as they're gone, grave robbers come, right? And they see her, and they start shooting at her, and they actually shoot her, and they, they think that they kill her, and basically, she doesn't die. She becomes her monster form, and then she rolls back up into the circus with uh, two bodies, and she's confronting the circus owner now, the short guy. And she's like, tell him. Tell him the truth. And you know, he, of course, he's getting mad and, you know, like, what are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. 
But basically what this guy has been doing is he has been selling the bodies. So he tips off whoever he's selling the bodies to. We don't know that yet. And they come and they get the bodies fresh. And he's been making money off of it. And he's like, you know, I did it because, you know, th that's, what, that's what has saved our circus. Uh, in fact, I even have an own, like, negotiation for when I pass away. You know, they're going to get my body. We don't know what the bodies are being used for or who's taking them. But basically, the circus people are like, what the hell, man? And they kick him out. And, of course, Lorelai's like, you know, how is that justice just kicking him out? And they tell the story about how he used to be and, you know, he had a very, you know, he would let people spit on him for money. You know, that's how low he was at one point in his life. And, like, how basically being kicked out of this, the only family he's really known, is, like, the worst punishment. And then as he's leaving, it shows him entering Captain Corley's circus. So... The question is, will he betray his former circus members or will he try to repent and do what's right? So, I don't know. It, it was a good read. I'm enjoying that. But that shows in number four. The next one is Philadelphia, number one. Sins of the Father. There's a little subtitle there. This is by Rodney Barnes. It's an image book. Um. So, first off, and I'll have to check. Um, this is a this is going to be a really quick review, just because it's kind of confusing to follow. And that's one of my my main issue with the book is that, especially the first half of it, I was like, who the hell is talking? Who the hell is who? Because one, the artwork isn't that clear. Like you get you get some of these characters, you know, it's kind of hard to tell like if if this guy is that guy. Um, I'm not a fan of this kind of artwork. They have some of the stuff in like the Spawn books, you know, a while back. Um, it's not bad artwork. I'm not saying it's bad. It, it was kind of hard to differentiate characters. And the way that the text was done, the dialogue, it was also kind of confusing of who's actually doing the talking. So keep that in mind. And that's why I'm going to kind of roll through this thing kind of quick. So basically, there's this guy. He's sending this email. Um... And basically, he's saying that he's about to do something. May God forgive him. And basically, it's a, a tale about a guy and his late father. So, um, and once again, this is one of those things. Like, I, I just don't know who is talking, who's what. Basically, a whole bunch of people are ended up missing. And it gets put over to f the, 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 the homicide team. And like, hey... If it's brought over to homicide, they, they believe these people are dead. And so, and there's this whole church scene. Um, yeah, like I said, it, it, was, it was really, really hard to follow at first. And I know this is going to be a shitty review. But without reading it panel by panel, that's the, this is really the best I can do. Anyway, he get, this one guy gets a tip, which I believe is the father. The father gets a tip of where all these people are. And it's called a place called Hell Hall. Right? So he goes there. He's looking for a certain person called Tevin Tompkins. Uh, he opens the store. He sees people. He's like, show yourself. And he's like, oh crap, it's a setup. So he has just been rampaged by people. Alright? But the people he believed that were going to be dead, he was expecting to come into a whole place of dead people, and they're not dead. That should give you a little bit of a hint. So basically, they find him. They, they finally find the, the dead cop. He's buried. And basically, this is a tale of a son who is... I'm assuming he's an investigator as well. And it's kind of like, I like this scene. Like, he walks in, like, it's his father's place. Like, here's a like a dead goldfish is sitting in the bowl. Like, it's all dark and dramatic. And basically, he says that, you know, my father would have never approved of me reading his journal. I'm going to read it anyway. And this is where you can kind of figure out who's who and what's doing what. So basically, he's sitting here reading his father's journal and basically saying that, you know, he's seen you know, so many types of deaths and murders, but this thing is weird, right? So basically, it talks about the father, you know, 
kind of teamed up with the um, God, what's the right word for it? The the mortician, basically, the one who's you know doing all the autopsies and stuff like that, and they're seeing a pattern like, hey, this is weird. Like all these people that we're finding dead have like traces of yellow fever, um, and there's all these bite marks, and we know they're human bite marks. And the, basically, these people are kind of like the, the, the I don't want to say low lives, but they're the, the street people, right? You know, your hookers, your, your, your drug dealers, you know, people that you might associate with other diseases, AIDS, um, etc., right? But these are, the, these are the kind of victims that they're finding. And well, let's see, does it say it here? Anyway, it kind of goes back into the story about how they were there together, and they were there. They find out about this other place. They're trying to they go into it, and he's telling her to leave. Um, or maybe that's what they found before. Yeah, so maybe it goes back in time a little bit, and this is kind of when he finds out what is actually going on. And basically, he's like, vampires do exist in Philadelphia. But it also gets pretty interesting because there is a there's a very historical tie-in. So basically, it goes into John Adams, the second president of the United States. So basically, it talks about he came back uh, when traveling from the Caribbean back in 1814. He had an illness believed to be yellow fever. And so, okay, they're like, oh, crap, there's something very historical, something very dark going on here. And um, he's walking the streets, and he sees the person that he's been looking for, this kid, right? And the kid comes running at him. He shoots him. It doesn't phase him at all. And that's when it clicks with him that freaking we have, we have vampires, right? So, once again, the father's dead. This is the kid reading the journal, learning all this stuff. He goes and actually has a meeting with um, you know, the woman that he kind of was partnered up with, getting all this information from. And, you know, tells her that, you know, he found the journal and knows that they work together. And so she kind of went back and tells him a little bit more. And... Is this the right one? Yeah. So, it's about, so he goes to this place and there's like this old graffiti. It says, you know, what happened to America? We the people, blah, blah, blah. And he sees all these people freaking hanging upside down like bats. And he, he escapes. He gets out of there. But he goes to the cemetery, he digs up his father's grave, and there's his father looking at him all creepy like, said, what took you so long, boy? So I don't know if you can see that well. So yeah, I honestly, I really, really enjoyed the story. I'll definitely be picking up issue two. It's a really choppy review, I know, but honestly, like I said, it was one of those things that, unless you read it panel for panel, there's not really a good way to do a good review of this book, in my opinion. Um, especially because there was that there's that initial confusion of who's talking, which character is who, and what time frame they're in. Because there's no like past, present. You know, it's like you have to figure that stuff out on your own. But <clears throat> so with that being said, guys, those those are the books that I reviewed for you and the pickups that I had. Um, I hope all of y'all had a great holiday. I hope all of y'all have a great weekend coming up. And with that being said, y'all, this is the Comic Assassin. I'm rolling out. And if you do go out anymore on Black Friday, do some more shopping, or this weekend. And if you're trying to pick up them books, I'm wishing you all happy hunting.